Hi, how you doing? Well, I'm in the middle of building a entertainment center, and this entertainment center is going to be made up of five cabinets. A center cabinet that will hold a TV that's in a lift system, it'll rise out of the cabinet, and two cabinets on each side of that, and then above there'll be two bookcases. So yesterday I made the left cabinet, and today I'm going to make the right cabinet. So I'm going to build the cabinet step by step, and the first step when I build a cabinet is generally I build the face frame. And what's the face frame? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's the face of the cabinet, and it's a lot like a frame. So it's made up of, in this case, four parts. Two styles, that's the vertical piece of wood, and two rails. So I have an upper rail and a lower rail. So let's make the face frame, and then we'll start building this cabinet. There's a few different ways to assemble your face frame. Now you can use the Craig jig, uh, which works really good and I've used that. You can use uh, dowels, which is a little bit more time consuming. And you can use a biscuit joiner and that's what I'm going to do right now. So the first step is to mark out where I want the biscuits to go. And that's simply by putting a line and then labeling that line. So A and A. And so I know that this part is going to go to this part. B. B. Now I've got the face frame marked out and I'm going to cut my slots with the biscuit joiner. Now I'm assembling the face frame and I'm just putting my marks, you know, lining up A with A and B with B and everything working out nicely. While you're clamping it, you just use a hammer to make sure you're nice and flush and that your lines line up. And then while the glue is still wet, you want to remove it with a wet cloth. That'll save you a lot of time sanding. Okay, well that looks pretty good. And the next step is to get this out of my way so I can start to cut the sides of the cabinet. Now I'm going to cut the sides of the cabinet. And for the sides I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood. Now that I've got my two sides cut, I have to cut a notch in the back and that's to accept the back of the cabinet. I'm going to attach the sides of the cabinet to the face frame by screwing through the face frame with inch and 5 inch long screws. I'm using a pre-drill and countersink drill bit to drill through my face frame. The clamp will help hold the cabinet to the side, or the face frame to the side, while I attach it with a screw. Now I want to add a brace to the back top of the cabinet. And it'll be just, just like this. And to get that measurement, 
I'm going to measure up front here, and it's three, uh, 34 and 16. But uh, you don't even have to measure it. What you could do is put a nice square edge on one side, and then just take a sharp pencil point. And basically, I'm going to fit it here because the cabinet's got some flex, so I don't want to take a measurement in the back because of the cabinet could be flexing out or in, and that would give me an incorrect measurement. I've just cross cut it on the chop saw, and that fits nice. See, it's a nice snug fit. So now I'll attach that to the back of the cabinet right here. Again, I'm using the same countersink drill bit in my drill to screw through the side of the cabinet. It's helpful to lay a clamp across the cabinet and just tighten it up a little bit and that holds the brace in place while you attach it with a screw. Notice how the brace is flush with the rabbit joint or notch, whichever you like to call that. Now, the reason for that is it gives you the, a place to put the back of the cabinet. You can then screw it into the brace and you can screw it into the side here. Now, for the most part, I make this joint or this uh, rat, this notch, let's call it, um, about a quarter inch heavy. But in this cabinet, I've made it a half of an inch. And I did that just in case I have to scribe the cabinet to the wall. Now I want to add a cleat to the inside of the cabinet. And the cleat will be attached to the front of the face frame. And then a piece of plywood will rest on that cleat. And that will be the bottom of the cabinet. But to get the right height, because I'm using a piece of bead molding around the opening of my face frame, I'm going to just place the bead molding on top of the face frame and then take a piece of scrap wood that's cut from the same plywood that I'm going to use for the bottom of my cabinet and then just trace a line. And then when I attach the cleat, I'll attach it so I just see the top of that line. Now I can take a framing square and drop it down onto the cleat that I just attached to the back of the face frame and square across. And when I attach my back brace, I'll attach the top of the brace flush to that line on both sides of the cabinet. Again, I'm using a clamp to hold the brace while I tap it into place, and then I'll attach it permanently with a few screws. Okay, well now I've got my cleat in the back of the face frame, I've got my back brace on, and I've also got the cleats on the side of the cabinet. So the next step is to drop in the bottom. But before I do that, I'm gonna put a little glue on all of those cleats. Well, now I'm ready to drop the bottom in, but I should add, I've already fit the bottom, so I know it fits really nice and snug. 
And you'd want to do that before you put any glue down. Okay, now I'm just going to tack it down with the nail gun. I'm almost ready to attach the bead molding to the face frame, but before I do that, I want to fill the holes with plugs. And I'll make these plugs with a special bit in my drill press. And the reason why I want to fill the holes first is I want to fill the holes, cut them flush with the face frame, and then sand the face frame before I add the bead molding, because if I didn't, then I'd have to be careful that I might hit the bead molding with the saw or with the sander. I've let the glue dry and now I'm going to cut the plugs flush with the cabinet top and I'm going to be careful not to scratch the face frame with the saw. Well the plugs are almost flush and I'll finish the job with a block of wood and sandpaper. Okay that's nice and flush. Now I'm going to sand the entire face frame with my orbital sander and I'm using silicone carbide sandpaper 120 grit. Now that the cabinet is completely sanded, I can apply the bead molding to the inside of the face frame. To apply the bead molding, I'm going to use inch long nails, 18 gauge inch long nails in my nail gun. And I'm just making sure that the back of the bead molding is flush with the back of the face frame. All right, well that's it for now. Uh, in my next video, I'm gonna make the adjustable shelves for the cabinet, and I'm also going to drill holes in the sides of the cabinet for the adjustable shelf pins. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.